Well, this is another video response to Matt. Um, hope I'm not being too redundant. Uh, we've been over some of this before, um, but we're getting close. Uh, the real difference seems to be, um, our sticking point is, is probably a few differences, no doubt, um, is that uh, you have a more um, a less harsh opinion of nature and a harsher opinion of intelligence and I'm exactly the opposite and so I'll try to explain that difference um, in your video you sort of implied that it was that, that greed was a symptom of intelligence and greed is a symptom of nature nature created greed um, intelligence um, is the um, the cure? Um, you sort of imply that there's no um, intelligence doesn't provide a, a guidepost or you know some sort of um, um, you know ethical rules or whatever that you know without uh, creating some kind of dogma, which is always dangerous. And I would agree, um, but I think intelligence does provide the capacity to logically deduce ethics and to um, and part of that deduction is just the simple recognition that we are natural animals that we have these different levels of consciousness um, of development whatever you want to call it we have these crude reflexes that are highly overreactive and very they're intelligent but they're very stupid by comparison we have this conditioned brain that defines our largely um, our unchangeable um, preferences and prejudices. Uh, you know, people's sexual taste, even their um, sexual preference, um, and uh, all manner of other things. Uh, our sense of style, our sense of comfort, our sense of humor. A lot of things are um, a creation of, or are written into our brains, programmed through conditioning, and that conditioning happens in a very sometimes erroneous and unintentional and unintelligent ways. We are conditioned because, you know, we can be conditioned to hate a breed of dog because the person walking the dog was an asshole, and vice versa. We could be conditioned to be afraid of a certain person because their dog scared us. I mean, it was, it's this kind of, it's almost dream state associations that are not very well connected sometimes and that can create, now it has created an intelligence in us that is very imperfect. And uh, then we have this final piece of um, intellectual hardware where language functions and uh, where we are able to conceptualize abstract ideas and uh, because it's still working through this original brain framework we we have emotions tied to these conceptions to these ideas we can learn to desire information we can learn to to want to be productive we can we can have all kinds of emotional attachments to ideas because we we learn to verify an idea or a conception and and once we validate it we associate it with this this positive emotion it becomes part of our conditioning it becomes part of that um, learned emotional reaction and so then once we've established that um, it all depends on how you process information and so a person can easily um, modify their conditioning in the sense of, of, of they can't change the original conditioning but they can have this this new um, more flexible conditioning on top that has the power to temper the, the older stuff <clears throat> and so if I put the question logically I mean I can say that yes there is a way to determine what um, um, is good and what is bad objectively and logically because we can make certain um, 
presumptions, whatever you want to draw conclusions, um, define certain fundamental facts. And so I've started this with the two basic ones. And, and I didn't mean to imply that we, you know, when, when I titled it, There's No God, Just Physics, that um, physics was going to be God. I just was in, intending to um, support the idea that we are, that physics runs the universe that we, there is physics taking place inside our brains, that, uh, um, well, let me get to, I wanted to get to the, the, the logic part, so I'll do that first, then we get to the, the billiard balls, which I disagree with you on, I mean, it's, it definitely is, uh, you know, very consistent, uh, you know, the <coughs> conversion of energy is a very consistent process, there isn't, there isn't much spontaneous going on, if any, but anyway, um, so let's just say that the, you know we'll just do a preview of the of the next few basic facts of life, and uh, you know maybe the third one would be is the knowledge we have that uh, we are equal, that that your feelings, your consciousness is equal to mine. It's comparable. It's um, it's in every significant way comparable. And so if there's a decision to be made about who should get a broken leg or who should suffer or who should do this or who should do that, it would be ludicrous for us to compete over that because we both lose. If somebody, you know, there's, there's no winning. I don't win by you suffering. You're not going to win by me suffering. Suffering is the enemy, not who does it. And so just by taking one simple fact of a recognition of our equality, already changes how we have to perceive our own our own needs and gratifying them we always have to measure them against well how much well who might am i stealing comfort from somebody else to gain comfort for myself am i depriving somebody else to satisfy myself i mean that the question has to be asked once you're a logical honest person it's a valid question because you cannot deny that that other consciousness is just as needy and just as deserving and just as the, the suffering they're enduring is no less real and so we just can't live our lives anymore if, if you're if you recognize that simple truth you just can't live your life anymore um, only considering what makes you feel good what makes you comfortable because the the the, the, the balance in the equation there cannot you cannot you, you, you're inevitably going to be wasteful if you always assume you come first. It just, you know, so anyway, I'm just saying that there is, there is a way to uh, objectify ethics. It's not some sort of thing that people must feel. It's just an understanding they must have. Um, if you can't, you know, if they don't recognize the full consequence of a statement like equality, then yeah, they're not going to get it. But, um, you know, it's a, it's, the logic is simple. And the logic grows from that in terms of how, like I said, if you're going to really truly measure productivity, you have to say to yourself, well, gee, you know, <clears throat> are, are my needs ex extravagant? Are, are, you know, somebody in, in just, just because of my perception, because I have this, this you know, lived in this comfortable um, culture and society have I, have I acquired a very extravagant um, um, need base uh, to, to acquire comfort and maybe that's my fault maybe I need to change my perception maybe I need to be satisfied with a lot less maybe just by twisting or turning a few knobs in there I can look at a tree and just be happy to see a tree I can enjoy life and experience life without needing too much from life and uh, well, anyway, I don't want to get to the billboard balls. Got 30 seconds. <clears throat> look, physics, look, whatever quantum theory comes up with these little subtle little quarks that we can't explain, blah, blah, blah. No, because physics is very reliable. Uh, computers don't go on a glitch because atomic particles did something random. Okay, they're very <laughs> consistent. They, the physics follows the rules. The billiard balls do move just in a predictable fashion. The fact is, we are predestined from the moment the Big Bang banged. And, uh, you know, yeah, the end.